Hey YouTube family, it's Umberto from Graylaw TV, and today we're gonna to talk about spousal self petitions. There is the battered spouse petition, and there is the widower petition, okay? Two different types, two separate different types of applications. I've been getting a lot of questions regarding what do I do, you know, if my spouse dies. I'm gonna answer those questions. For those of you who are new to the channel, we generally bring you good news. If you want bad news, you have to go to the other channels. That's our motto. Check out our other videos. We are bringing good news all the time. Uh, this one is more substantive. We're going to give you an idea of when to file these self petitions, who qualifies uh, and when you can do it. OK, it's going to be good stuff here. So uh, let's jump right into it. So there's two different types of applications when you can file on your own to get a green card, okay? There is an I-360 petition, and then there is an I-751 petition. These are two different petitions with two different requirements. Both forms can be used in connection with a battered spouse. That's a spouse that's been subject to extreme cruelty. That includes children and parents if they are abused by the U.S. citizen petitioner. The second petition is an I-751. You can file this as well if you've been subject to extreme cruelty, that's the battered spouse provisions, uh, or if there is a death, you can still apply with the form I-751. So how do you know when to file which one? So the I-360 self-petition you have not filed a petition through an I-130. We talked about the I-130 petitions. These are petitions that you file with USCIS or you can file an adjustment of status. No petition has been filed by the petitioner and there is abuse or there's a death. You can file the I-360 petition on your own. Very important. Now, what happens if this I-130 is pending with immigration? What do you do if there is a death or if you're being battered subject to extreme cruelty? Well, what happens is the I-130 petition automatically converts to the I-360 petition. So the third instance, let's say you actually have now your conditional green card and you're subject to extreme cruelty and there's a death then what you can do is you can file an I-751 petition on your own. There's two provisions, one for battered spouse, one for, for death of the petitioner. So the I-751 is used in connection with filing a petition after uh, you have your conditional green card. So let's talk about the legal requirements for filing uh, these petitions. I-360 battered spouse petition. It's under VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act. You can look up uh, certain circumstances in these cases. Generally, what you need to prove is that you were subject to extreme cruelty, emotional, physical. How do you prove this? If you were hospitalized, you got physically abused, you were hospitalized, you have hospital records, um, you have restraining orders. You go to the police and you tell the police, look, I can't be subject to this cruelty any longer. And this is what happened. They will issue a restraining order and you can use that as evidence. Photos. Uh, if you're in an abusive situation, please take photos. Um, that becomes evidence for your petition. It's very, very important. Affidavits from witnesses, anyone who's witnessed what happened if you have emails that you've sent to your parents, my husband or my wife is abusing me, keep the paper trail of that, okay? Very important that you use this evidence to prove your case. You have to file this with the I-360. You have to file this with the I-751 to prove that you know, you're a battered spouse. There is evidentiary requirements that you need to prove your case. What about the I-751? So the difference with the battered spouse provisions on the I-751 is that you have an additional requirement. You have to prove that the marriage was entered to in good faith. How do you prove that? You 
Prove that through joint documentation, health insurance, life insurance, car insurance, joint taxes, letters from family and friends, photographs, okay? Now, for the widower exceptions, both under the I-360 and the I-751, basically you need to have a certified death certificate. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, let's talk about some other requirements and situations with these petitions. So the first requirement for the I-360 is you must file that application within two years of death. So you cannot miss that window. Another requirement for the I-360 is that you need to provide a final divorce decree at the time of the interview. You don't need the divorce decree to file the petition, but you need ultimately the divorce, the final divorce decree uh, at the time of the interview. Now you have to remember as well, um, the battered, the I-360 petition uh, can be filed separately by children who were abused or parents who were abused. So if the petitioning U.S. citizen uh, individual, uh, you know, often there's horrible circumstances where children are abused and parents even are abused, they can file separate applications for the I-360. Now, for the I-360 widower petition, children are automatically included in the petition. You don't have to file a separate application for them. Now, here's one thing that, that you must remember. If you're filing an I-360, if you remarry, it automatically nullifies the petition. So you should just know that. Let's talk about some other requirements for the I-751 uh, petition. So let's say you got your conditional green card. So you generally have to wait two years to file the I-751 to remove the conditions of the green card, show the marriage is valid and in good faith. What happens if the petitioner, your spouse, dies right after you get the conditional green card? Well, you need not wait to file the I-751. You can actually file it right away before the two-year mark. So one final note also, if you get the green card through the I-360 petition, you need not wait five years to become a U.S. citizen. You can file within three years of having your green card. That's a bit of news that people often overlook. So these are self-petitions. These are very important. You know, a lot of people get confused on what do I do if the petitioner dies? You know, what do I do if I'm abused? Well, you have options under the I-360 and the I-751. Uh, I hope this has made things very clear. What I try to do is make things very clear for you. I take a subject that might be complicated. If you read these in the books, it it's all over the place. I mean, you know, you can't, you don't know when to file what, where, how, what the requirements are, you know, why the same circumstances require two different types of petitions. So I try to break it down. I hope I make it simple for you. And hey, thank you so much for watching Gray Law TV. Click below like and subscribe. Make sure you go to the notification bell. Uh, we also have a frequently asked question section. You can click on it. All the questions that I usually get, there are the video that connects right with those questions. It's a great library. So hey, we're real happy to have you on board. YouTube family, we're always thinking about you and thanks so much again for watching.